A lively driving experience, good interior space and low costs make Renault's much improved Twingo a city car with plenty of appeal. There are more fashionable and flamboyant urban runabouts out there, but there are a few that make more sense. Renault is rapidly establishing itself as a master of city motoring. For urban dwellers tuned in to the electric revolution, the company can offer everything from the outlandish Twizy to the cute little Zoe. Yet at the same time, for those whose preference remains with petrol power, uh, the brand continues to offer the little city car that first established it in this small sector. This car, the Twingo. This is the second generation model, the first to be offered to British buyers, and a car that since its launch here in 2007 has sometimes been forgotten by city sector purchasers, more likely to try a Peugeot 107, a Citroen C1, a Toyota Ego, a Fiat Panda, a Ford Ka, or a Vauxhall Aguila. So change was needed, especially since virtually all of these rivals have been either replaced or substantially revised since this Renault was first introduced to the UK market. Hence the much improved Mark II Twingo that we're going to look at here, announced early in 2012. With sharper looks, more equipment and lower running costs, it aims to put itself back on the city car map standing proud against both established rivals and the urban electric revolution. Can it do just that? Let's find out. Since diesel power generally only makes sense for larger super minis, the Twingo emphasis is not surprisingly on petrol power. The uh, range has been slimmed down in facelifted form, so most customers will be pointed in the direction of the familiar 1.2 litre 75 brake horsepower engine. Unless they're looking for some kind of junior hot hatch, in which case they'll want to know that uh, the 133 brake horsepower petrol 1.6 borrowed from the Megan remains in the surprisingly satisfying Renault Sport version. So, what's it like in day-to-day -day use? Well, it's true that despite the relatively light 950 kilogram weight, the engine needs to be revved quite a bit if you're to achieve rapid progress. But if you don't mind doing that, then rest to 60 can be achieved in just 12.3 seconds on the way to a top speed of 105 miles an hour. That'll be quite enough for most urban users, but for those wanting a bit more, uh, then there's a Renault Sport 133 version that manages rest to 60 in just 8.7 seconds on the way to a top speed of 125 miles an hour. One surprise for me with this car has been the ride quality. With its large wheels and short wheelbase, I expected it to crash through potholes and over speed humps, but actually the uh, ride quality is composed, supple and comfortable over virtually all surfaces. Uh, it's uh, good fun to chuck about too, changing direction promptly and cornering with the kind of vigour that you'd find only on the best city car offerings. And uh, it's uh, something that makes you really quite keen to try the top of the range Renault Sport 133. The Twingo has always been small, sporty and cute in its more expensive forms, but entry level versions have tended to be rather frumpy. No longer. A fresh face and a fresh marketing approach means that these days the Twingo is far more able to offer itself up as a lifestyle alternative to cars like the Fiat 500 or a baseline Mini, which is important since that's where the market growth is. The look is certainly a lot more individual these days with repositioned front fog lights and round side lights giving uh, a more playful character to the front end. That's what Renault says anyway. Uh, it helps also that you've got these eyelids around the headlights and a bolder, more assertive front grille. Most owners will want to build on this either by specifying one of the bolder colours, uh, fuchsia or Bermuda blue anyone, um, some of which can be coordinated with the interior and the upholstery. You can also colour coordinate the outside. There's everything from mini like roof decals to colour coordination of the door mirrors and even the tips of these side protective mouldings. At the rear there's also a fresher look with softer curves for the bumper and tailgate plus revised rear light clusters. 
Inside, less could be done, and as before, you get a rather basic utilitarian layout. But even here, the designers have done their best to lift things with smarter, brighter upholstery, coordinated with the door trims and even with the heater and ventilation system controls. Now, uh, as before, there's a neat uh, centrally mounted instrument cluster, and there are no fewer than 11 different storage spaces dotted around the cabin uh, so that you can keep your odds and ends from sliding about. Uh, build quality from the Novo uh, Mesto factory in Slovenia seems reasonable. On the back seat, there's a lot more space than you might uh, expect a little city car to be able to offer. Uh, that's uh, due to the fact that this generation Twingo is a massive 170 millimeters longer than the original pre-2007 version. Now it also helps enormously in this respect that uh, you've got two individual rear seats here and they can be individually slid backwards and forwards uh, by up to 220 millimeters so that you can prioritize either legroom or luggage space. You can also recline the seats for greater comfort on longer journeys. And talking of luggage space, that's a strong point too for this class of car. Thanks to the sliding rear seats, you've got anything between 165 and 285 litres in the back here. That's depending on the position of the seats themselves. And if you push them forward, you can free up up to 959 litres of fresh air. Now, you'll need to budget around £10,500 for the 1.2 litre model that most will want. The Renault Sport 133 variant costs around £13,500. But here we're focusing on the mainstream 1.2. Um, a car that looks pretty good value when you take its spec into account. As for rivals, well, there are cheaper alternatives from budget brands like Hyundai, Chevrolet and Kia, but these are really aimed more at the cheap and cheerful brigade. Renault, though, likes to think of this Twingo as being more of a lifestyle-orientated city car, a car with a bit more character. Buyers looking for products such as these tend to be uh, interested in small products like uh, the Ford Ka or the Fiat 500, both of which seem to be slightly less expensive at first glance than this Twingo. But that's only because, unlike this Renault, they're offered in entry-level basic spec. If you uh, look at the same equipment levels as Renault will offer you on this 1.2, uh, then you'll be paying a lot more for a Ka or a Fiat 500. As for a very basic Mini, well, uh, uh, the cheapest Mini hatch you can buy is £1,500 more than this Renault, even before you start trying to equal the spec. As I've already suggested, there are no really basic Twingo variants these days, so no models lacking essentials like sliding or spit-folding rear seats. Whether you go for this 1.2 or 1.6 litre power, you will in fact find a very decent level of specification that runs to smart 15 inch alloy wheels, front fog lamps, body colour bumpers, air conditioning, an MP3 compatible CD stereo with steering wheel controls and audio streaming with USB connectivity, uh, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, uh, height adjustable driver's seat, uh, power mirrors, tinted electric front windows and a speed limiter. Plus, rather curiously for a city car, cruise control. It's a pity that the uh, price doesn't include uh, a spare wheel, instead you get a tyre inflation kit or a category one alarm. If you want more than an ordinary look for your Twingo, there's much more scope these days to personalise your car, with everything from fancy roof decals to uh, a range of alloy wheels and bespoke rear spoilers, plus colour coordination that extends to everything from door mirrors to door trims and even the side protection mouldings. Now, extras, uh, well, there's plenty of those, of course. Uh, everything from uh, uh, an affordably priced Garmin sat-nav to uh, climate control, an iPod-compatible radio with a Renault app that gives you fuel-saving tips, a leather-covered steering wheel, and a bike rack. And if this car was mine, I'd also want to be considering one of the uh, panoramic sunroof options. There's a, a glass roof or a fabric roof. 
Safety wise, it's disappointing to find ESC stability control on the options list along with curtain airbags. But you do get uh, Isofix child seat fastenings, twin front and side airbags, and an anti-lock braking system made more effective with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist for emergency stops. Now this 1.2 litre Twingo is one of the models in Renault's range that qualifies for what the brand calls Eco 2 status. Uh, that's uh, something that's conferred upon uh, all models it makes that uh, produce less than 120 grams per kilometre of CO2. The actual figure here is 119 grams per kilometre, which means you'll get free road tax for the first year of ownership and just £30 a year is all you have to pay in road fund licence thereafter. Uh, the fuel consumption figure is 55.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. And if you want to get somewhere near that kind of figure on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it might be worth spending a little extra on the iPod compatible radio, which uses uh, GPS navigation to run a Renault developed app, which uh, is there to give you eco-conscious driving tips. If you follow those tips, Renault reckon you'll be able to uh, save about 10% on your normal day-to-day -day fueling costs. And talking of ongoing running costs, this improved Twingo is uh, eligible for the Renault 4 Plus program, said to be uh, worth up to £900. It packages up uh, a four-year, 100,000-mile warranty, four years uh, or up to 48,000 miles of free servicing, four years of roadside cover, and four years of lease or PCP finance subject to status. What else? Well, insurance, that's group 12 on the one to 50 grouping scale for this 1.2. Uh, a relatively affordable grouping helped by the fact that the front and the rear of this Twingo have been designed to shrug off minor knocks. That's not enough to help the flagship Renault Sport 133 version though, which is up at uh, group 21. It's also worth pointing out that the whole car has been designed to be uh, easily recyclable and has been uh, manufactured with one eye on keeping emissions down during that manufacturing process. Now, if this second generation Twingo had offered this revised model's marketing and fun factor from the very start, then today it might more often be considered as a more affordable, more sensible and quite chic alternative to fashion conscious urban runabouts like the Fiat 500 and the Mini. It now can be. The improvements made have lifted it clear of the uh, affordable but rather dull urban scoots at the bottom end of the city car sector and into contention with a selection of smart little cars that you might actually feel rather good about owning. Though the underpinnings may be old, the outlook of this car remains young and vibrant, adjectives appropriate to the uh, driving experience served up behind the wheel. Some trendy arrivals may have classier cabins or lower running costs, but cars of that kind tend to be pricier. Which means that if you've got one eye on the bottom line in selecting a city car, yet still want a feel-good factor as part of the deal, then Twingo Motoring can still serve up an appealing choice.